Real Animals Fishing Show is presented by Yellowfin Yachts. Hey gang, today I'm fishing the low country of Charleston, South Carolina. Captain Ben Alderman's taking me fishing. He's on him. Whatever you do, don't touch that dial. It's going to be off the hook. flow right there. How many tides do you have a day? Two. Two tides? Yeah. Five hours and 50 minutes apart. Or Is it always that way or do they change during the moon phases? It's, no, always, it's always that way. Always the same, huh? Yeah. Interesting. This last week I fished this spot on the falling tide as they come to me down the bank and it's been great. I know they're in here somewhere. Just gotta figure out exactly where. I feel like with the weather we have, one of them should react to one of these baits. You can hear some stuff in there you can wrestling hear them around. In the, you'll yeah. hear them in the thickest of the thick. They'll, they'll get in there as far as they can get. Well, and you know what I noticed too, and it's one of the tips I like to give people. Even though you, your best fishing was back in this corner, you started 120 yards that way. Yeah. And yeah. worked your way into it. You know, don't just go racing up to your spot. Fish have tails and they move a lot. So instead of just pouring in right here to where he caught them the day before, he started way out there and worked his way in nice and slow to kind of see if those fish had stayed somewhere else. It's a really, really good tip. For anglers, you until, see it all the time. Until the guy who thinks you don't know what you're doing comes and goes straight to where you were the day before and is like, he didn't even know where the fish were. <laughs> I'm like, wait a minute, I was going to get there. <laughs> that's when patience hurts you. Guys. Yeah, no, that's when you get, that's when you get cut off. <laughs> we made a short run this morning from Captain Ben's Marina. We've got kind of a little bit of overcast skies, not really rainy setup, just a little bit of cloud cover, keeping it nice and cool this morning. We're fishing the the last part of the incoming tide, we're almost at high tide now. We're just kind of working some of these grass edges here uh, right along the ICW and uh, hoping to pick up a few redfish this morning. We'll see kind of how it goes. Right now we're just fishing some live Peter mullet. Um, we're planning on working some artificials this morning and we're just uh, fishing our way through the beautiful morning here in Charleston, South Carolina. There he is. Oh boy. Oh, get, off good fish, too. get off that bed. Get off that bed. Good fish. Get off that bed. You get away from that grass. Don't you get up in there. Oh, he's in there. He's in there. Same rig. Lord have mercy. <laughs> he's gone. Wow. No, he's not. Dude, that's a beast right there. What a fish. Let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. Storm's made him eat. He's making the Looks line like sing. more of them. Yeah. Looks like they're following him. I see some mud. Where is he in relation to this oyster bed right here? You're good, you're good, I think. Oh no, he's on the back side of it. He's coming right at it. <laughs> no, he's Looks like it. Com combat fishing 101 here, dog. It really is. Between the, oh wow, Whoa. what a bruiser. Big red, wow, look at that. I love that. Woo. He's got power. Dude, that fish is ornery right there. That's a PIG hog right there. It is, you go ahead and catch one too. Well, I was gonna help you with that one. I'll just let this one sit up there. It goes off, it goes off. Oh, it's going off. Wow, what a pig that is, dude. Look at that. Boy, South Carolina, Ooh. huh? Absolutely, this is why we come. That one looks like he's from Louisiana. He looks like he's made a trip. 
<laughs> that one right there, dude. Our fish, can, our fish here can look a little wallowed dude, out. Dude, that? Well, that one don't look wallowed out. No. Nice. I'll tell you what, that right there is a bull red. <laughs> look at that beast. He felt like it. He oh. felt like it. Huh? He's a nice one. That's you? a dandy, brother. All right. That's a dandy. I didn't have nothing to do with that. That was all uh, Captain Ben Alderman right there. You know I'm the host. He took a little trip up in the. He took a trip up in the grass well, though. He had one, me this, worried this, there for a second. This fish here can go wherever it wants. This is a big fish here. Nice. Look at that bomber right there, huh? That's why you come to Charleston, South Carolina, right there. What a great fish, Ben. Nice job, buddy. Oh yeah, that fish huh? is in the teens. Yeah, that one's a dandy right there. We're gonna get her back in the water. Make sure she makes some babies. That one will likely make it to. Yep. Yeah, and it's a girl too. Yep. That's definitely a girl. That's, that's open. All right. Yeah, nicely done. Let's get it done. There's an opener right there. Let's get it wow. done. Hey gang, this week's tip of the week, I want to talk to you about the importance of getting a really good pair of polarized sunglasses. There's a lot of different brands on the market. You can make your own choices but I don't think there's any tool that's more important to an inshore or offshore angler. Today, Charleston, South Carolina, a lot of kind of muddy water, you know, not real easy to see into, yet because of the quality of mine and Captain Ben's glasses, we're able to pick up just that hue of the redfish, even in the dirty water. It makes such a difference. And maybe you're fortunate you get to fish where the water's really clean or normally clean, like it is on the west coast of Florida, some areas on the east coast of Florida, things like that. But then it's even easier to see them. So I just think it's a tool that really, really can be useful. I see a lot of guys spend a lot of money on a boat, spend a lot of money on tackle, and then they buy a $15 pair of polarized sunglasses. If that's all you can afford, I understand it, you know, do the best you can, but it's one of those tools that really helps if you get a really top-notch pair of glasses. I promise you it'll pick your game up tenfold, easier to see floating things in the water when you're running your boat. It's much safer to run your boat with a great pair of polarized sunglasses, and I promise you it'll make sight fishing and seeing those fish in the water much easier, and that's your tip of the week. Hey, what you got? I let him eat that one. Well, that's good. Letting him eat is a good thing. Well, they really move a lot. I mean, it seems like they just don't dig right. This one came all the way out here. I gotta have something else, maybe, because he's not. Don't you be a big, no. I don't know what he is. It's, oh, it's a huge red. redfish. It's Are you red. kidding me? Yeah. I have never. That was weird. <laughs> it's a big red dog. That was weird. Under the boat, do si do, that was around a good we save. go. I don't, he, uh, he's got a mind of his own, this one. He's got me on something. You on something? He got me on pumpkin. What's he got you on? I don't know. He's, he's got, got me you on, on something, something, but. He's got me on the power pole. Yeah, go down, go down, 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 down. down. And go back up. Uh, uh. Lordy. The agony the of defeat. <laughs> the agony of defeat. <laughs> the redfish win. Oh. Oh. That was absolutely ridiculous. Normally, redfish are just this power digger. I mean, usually they just turn away from the hook and dig and dig and dig. That one <laughs> ran straight at me, straight under the boat. That one acted nothing like a big bruiser redfish. Woo! I'll take it though. That was a lot of fun. I see all these mounds. Obviously this tide is flooding out of here. So what draws you to this particular location, Ben? I always explain these flats to be like a leaf. You know, they have capillaries and a main vein or several main veins. And it's like the, as the tide turns, the leaf just tilts on its side and everything gets forced through the capillaries into the main veins. And we're sitting in one of the main veins of this whole place. That means we can get out and the fish are getting funneled right, right to us. us. So it's best to be here waiting on them, you know, and try to, try to have your baits bump into them, not your boat. I see color on the back edge. 
How long is it gonna take? Ooh, see the color? I see it. And there he is. Dude, you called it. That is sight fishing extreme right there. In dirty water. They were there. Man, you're twisted. That's twisted, bro. In this water, that's twisted. Oh, I could see him. It's a mad skill set, but man. Uh, he's gonna make me. He's gonna make me wish I was six feet five. <laughs> yes, he is. Look at him. How does he know? He knows. How he knows he right know? where that oyster bar is. He knows every inch of this almost as good as you do. Right. And he's coming home. It's a pretty one though too. The he kind is. of fish here are pretty. Color. He's got color for a little guy. Lancer. Well, that's, that's probably just a little over the slot. That might be a heartbreaker. But he's pretty. He's got color like the rest of these fish back here, Dick. You know that I'm the host, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I am. The Real Animals Tackle Box presented by CCA Florida and the CCA Star Tournament. In today's Real Animals Tackle Box, Captain Ben and I are using 7 foot 6 inch medium action AR-15 spinning rods by Bull Bay Rods, Quantum Smoke 40 spinning reels with 15 pound braided line and 25 pound fluorocarbon leader. We were using live 5 to 7 inch finger mullet on 2 aught Nautilus Light circle hooks. Real Animals Tackle Box is brought to you by Quantum, the real choice for the real animals. Strike King, number one in fishing lures. Mirror Lure the record setters. Ingo Coolers, the first, the best, your last. Bull Bay Rods, combined with original Fuji guides for a difference you can feel. The Real Animals Tackle Box presented by CCA Florida and the CCA Star Tournament. I'm just bumped into my line. There he is. Again. There he is. Boy, Yay. look at all of them. Oh my God. There's the the school. That's cool. And there's the school. Woo. Look at the size of that school. Wow. Good job, Ben. Sure, man. Tell real you what, quiet, just, real patient. Just going downwind made the difference. Isn't that crazy? How that would even matter? Why does that matter? Don't you do it. Just figured out he was hooked. What's that? Just figured out he was hooked. Boy, he's fast. Hey, fall in. If you do, I won't laugh. <laughs> Much. Oh, I'm bruiser. Out here and then I'll help you, Ben. I'm bruiser. Hang on, I'll come get you. I got you, buddy. He Look done. at that thing, huh? He done. That one is a bomber. You wonder why we had that big wake in here? <laughs> Look at that beast. In the mud. So we are we are getting shallow. Yeah, she's that really means, dropping out of here. That means we need to uh, be prudent. Yeah, we do. Oh, look at that. All right. Huh? Ben, nice job, kiddo. Want to get the release? That was a dandy. You're on fire today, my friend. My talented friend. The mullet. Always give credit to the mullet. He mm. sacrificed his life. <laughs> yeah, we gotta love some mullet, huh? We've been in the back. Uh, we really were just kind of fished that most of the tide out. It's still dropping, but we had to get out of the back country before we got stuck. Ben caught some really, really nice fish. I lost a pig. And uh, now we're out here in the intercoastal waterway. We're gonna work the shell edges, see if we can't pick up a couple more fish and uh, see if Captain Mike can get on the board and get those feelings repaired that the big redfish hurt. <laughs> we well, exactly. He's down the bank. It sure is. <laughs> I was trying to make sure he had it. 
I think he did. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was like a, it never got a good thump. There goes another one right there. Yeah. You know what I mean? It just never yeah. really thumped it. What's he look like? I don't know. He looks like a redfish? I don't know, I've had I redfish like act as weird as possible today, so your redfish I don't have any idea about. Mm. Yep, it's a red dog. Yes, it is. Pretty fish. It's one of my tournament fish. Yeah. This one ate it pretty good. Look at how blue it is. I Look guess again. he did eat it. Look at how blue that fish is. Come here, Betsy. I got you. It's unbelievable, the colors here. I mean, it's like, look at the blue in the head. Must be from digging in that mud. It's absolutely incredible. You know what we're going to do with you? Because you ate it and swam at me. I wasn't sure you had it. I'm going to let you keep it. Sometimes that's the best thing to do. Just let it rust out. Oh, yeah. You do a lot less damage to them that way, especially a fish like this that you know is a slot fish. Come on. He didn't drop it. I called that one. You did call that one. I mean, as, soon as, the, as soon as the word came out of my mouth, what is it? Is it a flounder? Know. I don't know. It didn't look like a red dog. It, it's a stink. Minus one. What'd you catch? A stink ray. You got did me. not. Yeah. You did. How did I even do that? I don't know, but good job. <sighs> Tightened it up. Stink ray. Closed captioning brought to you by Gator Ford. Real Animals Hook It and Cook It, brought to you by Rumfish Grill at the Guy Harvey Outpost. I'm at the Rumfish Grill on St. Pete Beach in St. Pete Beach, Florida. I'm with Chef Tyson. Tyson, what are we cooking tonight? Today we're going to make Rumfish Prince Edward Island mussels. Nice. So for the mussels, we're going to start with our oil. Just enough to coat the bottom of the pan. Into the oil, we're gonna put our chorizo sausage. It's cooked and then sliced. With the chorizo, you just wanna brown it. You're gonna bring out the flavors of the chorizo into the oil, okay. which is gonna to help to flavor the mussels. So now we got the nice little brown on it. It's already cooked, so we just want the flavor. We're gonna flip that over. We're gonna add our shallots. Nice little tablespoon of that. Some minced garlic. Now we're gonna add our Prince Edward Island mussels. We put about a pound of mussels per order. Okay. Now you just want to take those mussels and cover them in the garlic and the chorizo. Kind of flavor them up. We're going to deglaze with some white wine. You can see the mussels are starting, starting to open, pop open yeah. a little bit. Yeah. Now we want to add a little clam stock. We're going to add our saffron pickled onions. Pickled in a little vinegar, some saffron, bay leaves. So now that that's good and reduced, Half, it's nice and thickened up. We're gonna season our mussels, a little salt and pepper. We're gonna squeeze some lime juice in there. We're gonna finish with a little butter in there. Thicken it up. Throw a nice pinch of cilantro in there. Grab our bowl. I like a good amount of the broth with the mussels too. Get our onions and sausage on the top. And there you have Prince Edward Island mussels at Rumpfish. Chef Tyson, that looks amazing. For this great recipe and more, go to our website. The Real Animals Hook It and Cook It, brought to you by Rumpfish Grill at the Guy Harvey Outpost. So we started the morning. We had an incoming tide, pretty high actually. And uh, boy, we threw a bunch of artificials, really couldn't get anything going. As the tide turned, start to go out, start, started to go out, we ran back into a pocket where Captain Ben had been sitting on a bunch of fish and was absolutely fantastic. And now we're going to fish one creek mouth right here and try to pick up a couple more before uh, this tide turns. But it, they drop out of these creek mouths and then they'll sit right here and wait for that tide to kind of flood back in so they can slide back in with all that bait. So we're going to see if we can't ambush a couple right here. Ooh. In the creek. Ooh, I just got dumped. I just got thumped. Oh, there's there a good one. There he is. There he is. 
That's a good one, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Oh, yeah. That's a, ooh, don't turn back that way so fast. That one's pulling drag. Whoa! Boy, look at them all in this corner. This whole corner just lit up. Nice. Yeah. Oh, that double. Come on, Captain Mike. I was, I was hoping. Come on, Captain Mike. I was hoping. Don't shake your head like that. Let's do this. He does. Playing through. Nice. Boy, there's a pile of them on this corner. Yes, there are. I'm getting dangerous right here. I'm trying yep. to manhandle this fish. Gonna play the under the boat game like, like we know not to do. Yeah. That's what they do though. The big ones always want, oh, look at that. <laughs> totally different color. Same shoreline, a little bit bigger, totally different color. That's just so weird to me. Did I let him eat it? No, I got it. Oh, you got right in the corner of the mouth. That's circle mouth. hook. Captain circle hook. Captain brush circle hook. Nice. All right. I'm <laughs> eating. Look at a blue tail again. A lot of shrimp in the water. That blue tail, usually when they're eating a lot of crustaceans, that blue really comes out. My boy. All right. Captain Ben, great day in the water, my friend. Absolutely fantastic fishing here in Charleston, South Carolina. Big redfish and lots of them all over the place. We certainly hope you enjoyed this week's episode as much as we enjoyed bringing it to you. I'm Captain Michael Anderson reminding you that whatever you do, don't let your kid be the one that got away. <laughs>